Welcome to Brenda Bella Homestead, with its opulent rooms and its luxurious lifestyle. Home to Cluedo and the scene of murder, mystery and intrigue. A visitor lies dead in one of the rooms in the homestead. Your task is to solve the crime. There are six suspects, but which one is the killer? Could it be Mrs. Peacock, owner of Brenda Bella and beautiful society hostess? Perhaps Colonel Mustard, military hero and intimate family friend. Is Reverend Green a saint or a sinner? Could Professor Plum be the architect of a murder? What about Miss Scarlet, Mrs. Peacock's glamorous stepdaughter? Or Mrs. White, Mrs. Peacock's loyal housekeeper and devoted confidant? You will be assisted in your investigations by the intrepid Detective Sergeant Bogon. And now your host for Cluedo, Ian McFadgen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to another edition of Cluedo. As you know, the rules of the game are very simple. A murder has been committed at Brindabella Homestead, and our studio audience tonight are going to be detectives. They are going to discover who the murderer was, what the weapon was, and in which room the murder occurred. And the person who first identifies the correct combination is going to win this fabulous prize. Tonight's Cluedo winner will receive a holiday for two flying continental to tropical Guam and Saipan, staying at the Pacific Island Club for a total of six fabulous nights. Every week, Cluedo Prizes are proudly brought to you by Continental Holidays, the value holiday specialist. Fantastic prize. As normal, in Cluedo, there are six suspects. Mrs. Peacock, Professor Plum, Miss Scarlet, the Reverend Green, Mrs. White, or Colonel Mustard. And there are also six possible murder weapons. There is an antique pistol. There is a bottle of poison. There is a venomous spider. There is a letter opener. There is a common brick. And there is a black belt. And the murder might have happened in one of six rooms. A lounge, kitchen, dining room, library, the study, or the billiard room. Now, every member of the audience has a dial in front of them, and they can pick any combination of murderer, weapon, and room at any time during the show. And, of course, they'll be changing their selections as more evidence comes to light. But now to the details of the murder itself. A heinous crime made all the more unsavoury because it has occurred in a season of festivity, jollity, and goodwill towards men. Let's cross to Brindabella Homestead now as the inhabitants are getting ready to celebrate Christmas. Extremely generous of you, Mrs. Peacock. The nations to the club have been a bit down this year. At least I'll give the underprivileged kids of the district a Christmas they'll never forget. Well, it's the least we can do, Sergeant. It's greatly appreciated. Sergeant? Good morning, Miss Scarlet. What's that doing there? I didn't think you'd mind. Mind? This was a Christmas present from Daddy, the last doll he ever gave me, the year after Mum died. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I'm sorry, Sergeant. Matilda stays. But of course. There's more than enough here. Well, I'd better be going. Yes. Well, what are your plans for Christmas, Sergeant? Oh, it's going to be a quiet old Christmas for me. My wife and kids have gone to see her mother. She's not very well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Then you'll be on your own. Yeah. But I'm going to take leave early in the new year and catch up with them then. Well, then you must come to Brindabella for dinner. No one should be on their own for Christmas. And you'll come for Carol's Christmas Eve. Well, this is extremely kind of you, Mrs. Peacock, but uh, I couldn't impose. Christmas is a time for family and close friends. Nonsense. It'll just be the household. Colonel Mustard, Reverend Green, no extra family. I have news for you, Elizabeth. Dear Aunt Evelina wants to stay for a couple of days. Oh. In that case, I will not be joining you. My... No, 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 not if Evelina's going to be here. I like to enjoy my Christmas, Elizabeth. With that woman around, that will certainly not be possible. We can't be too hard on Evelina, Mike. Please. As a special favor to me. You are making this extremely difficult for me. Oh, Mike, it wouldn't be Christmas without you. 
I hope you realize that I wouldn't do this for anybody else. You're sweet. Yes, I know. But I don't think you'll be persuading Clem quite as easily. He knows Evelina every bit as well as I do. You can be sure she's not coming all this way just to wish us the compliments of the season. Who? Aunt Evelina. Who's that? You don't know her. You will. Mm. Why would she write to me and ask if she could come and not Elizabeth? She's never really regarded Mrs. Peacock as part of the family. It looks on her as something of an interloper. Do you think you're enjoying the Brickies libraries, Mrs. White? Oh, for heaven's sake, give me that. It's just right for the job it does. Makes my terrine set beautifully. Terrine. We have had Tureen on Boxing Day picnics at Brinda Bella ever since I can remember. Boxing Day. Aunt Evelina could well add meaning to the name at last. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye. arrived and she's already driving me up the wall. How are you, Evelina? Merry Christmas and welcome. I thought someone might have been here to meet me. Someone might have been if we'd known when to expect you. Mm. I can see you haven't changed much. No, you haven't changed much at all. As I said before, Evelina, God And as I said, oh. Reverend, I've no time for your garbled nonsense. Now move out of the way, let me into the damn house. I won't stay here under false pretenses. I want you to know exactly why I've come. Then you can make up your minds whether I'm to stay or go. You know you are always welcome, Evelina. Yes, 